Hey guys, this is the incident of 10 April 1912. RMS Titanic, the world's largest and luxurious ship in its time, it set out on its first voyage. It was traveling from Southampton, England to New York. All kinds of people were aboard, renowned industrialists and actors as well as immigrants who were on their way to America in a search of better life. It was being commanded by the 62-year-old senior captain Edward John Smith. It was not only the world's largest ship, around 269 meters in length and more than 53 meters in height. The luxury on the ship was awe-inspiring. In those times, it cost $7.5 million to build the ship. The facilities and decoration inside the ship could even leave a five-star hotel behind. Two grand staircases, a Turkish bath, heated swimming pool, an electric bath, two barber shops, four restaurants and a library as well. Moreover, the kind of safety features that were used to build the Titanic, this ship was believed to be unsinkable. It was a ship that could never sink, it was that safe. Light Star Line was the name of the company that built this ship. The vice president of this company was so confident regarding that, that he came out in front of the public and said that this ship is unsinkable. But two days later, after setting out on its first voyage on 12 April 1912, Titanic began to get its first ice warnings. The Atlantic Ocean that Titanic was crossing in order to get to America was replete with ice. There were mountains of icebergs that were a danger to this ship. These warnings are not an unusual thing. This, the ships that sail the oceans often communicate through radio and signal the nearby ships about ice being present in their vicinity and seek caution in their path. After getting these warnings, Titanic changed its course twice to avoid danger, but it did not reduce its speed. It continued its journey towards its destination at a speed of 21.5 knots, which is equal to 40 km per hour. Two days later, on 14 April 1912, there were seven more ice warnings, but Captain Smith and his crew ignored these warnings. They did not slow the speed of Titanic. Slowly, the day draws to a close. The sun sets and the temperature sinks. The notable thing about the night of 14th April was that the moon was not visible. There was a crow's nest on the ship, a small platform at a height. Someone is made to sit at top it so that they can keep watch on the track of the ship to look out for traffic or obstructions. At 11.39, a man named Frederick Fleet was atop the crow's nest. Suddenly, he saw before himself a huge iceberg. He picked up the phone and called the officers on the bridge. He screams that there was an iceberg in front of them and the ship could be steered immediately. First officer William heard his message and signaled the engine room. But it was too late. Just one minute later at 11.40, the ship crashed into the iceberg. The iceberg was not a small one. It was 200 by 400 feet in length, as big as football field. Since the iceberg was so big and heavy, it caused massive damage to Titanic. A few seconds after collision, the ship's captain Smith and architect Thomas Andrews arrived at the site to see how much damage had the ship incurred due to the impact. When they saw, they realized that the ship would sink. They were completely shocked upon this. They thought that this ship was unsinkable. 20 minutes after collision, at 12 a.m., Captain Smith ordered his crew 
to send a distress call over radio. Nearby ships would maybe detect it and come to save them. Senior Radio Jack Phillips turned out to be the hero of her story. One after the another, he began sending distress signals, but there was no response. He sent another and another. There must be some ship out there that will pick up their distress call. 20 minutes later, at 12.20 a.m., there was a ship called RMS Garpathia that was present near the Titanic. It detected the single. He spoke to the operator of Titanic over radio and directed his ship to move towards Titanic and go save them. The problem was that despite its closeness, the ship was 107 kilometers away. Even if it moved towards the Titanic at its top speed, it would take 3.5 hours to reach the Titanic. Would the Titanic ship stay put for 3.5 hours? The rest of the crew members lit up flares and rockets in the sky in that hope that a ship nearby would notice them and go and save them. But unfortunately, apart from the ship Carpathia, there was no re response from any other ship. Meanwhile, Captain Smith ordered the evacuation of passengers using the lifeboats on the ship. As per protocol, women and children would be given preference to the board the lifeboat. As for the passengers on the ship, they were not that much scared or afraid. Most of the passengers believed that the Titanic was an unsinkable ship. There is no need for worry. After all, the company that put out ads claimed this again and again that if the ship might have hit an iceberg, but the ship wouldn't sink. But with the passage of time, the compartments began to fill, the ship began to tilt. Gradually, the passengers realized that the ship could indeed sink. When this realization dawned, there was a chaos and people began to run around in panic. People began to fight with one another for a seat in the lifeboat. In this chaos, some people tried snatching their place in the lifeboat but some people had accepted their fate and stayed back in the ship. Everybody was crying and praying. As per eyewitnesses, the ship broke into two halves at around 2.20 and then slowly began to sink. It did not take even three hours for the unsinkable ship to sink. The RMS Carpathia ship that has set out to save the Titanic reached this location around 3.30 till 4 a.m. to save the people on the ship but it was an hour late. But the people who were on lifeboats were successfully saved by the ship RMS Carpathia. After the disaster of the Titanic, questions were raised, many controversies took birth, Investigations were conducted and some unknown facts surfaced that shocked everyone. How would it feel if I say that there was another ship 37 kilometers away from Titanic that night, which could make it in time to save the passengers of the Titanic? It is true, the ship was SS Californian. At 11.15, the radio operator on the Californian ship had switched off the radio. The Californian ship had stopped for the night and was not moving ahead, keeping the danger in mind. Since the ship had stopped off for the night and the radio was off, it did not receive the distress signal. The ship was so close to the Titanic that the passengers on the deck of the Titanic could see that ship. When the officers were boarding the passengers in the Titanic, one officer even remarked that he could see a ship in the distance and that it would come save them soon so there was no need to worry. But this Californian ship did not even come up when rockets and flare were lit by passengers. The crew members from the Californian ship had actually seen the rockets fired from Titanic. They had even informed their captain Stanley Lord but the captain insisted that it was no distress single rather than the rich men on Titanic who were parting. If the captain Lord of the Californian ship taken the rockets and flares seriously that night, 
so a lot of lives would be saved. Now after 70 years Titanic was found and this was the leftover of Titanic ship